we'll take you to Sydney now, where police have declared a stabbing at an Orthodox church on Monday was a terrorist act. A teenage boy was arrested after a bishop and several churchgoers were stabbed while giving a sermon that was being streamed live online. At least four people were stabbed, but police said none of their injuries were life-threatening. Well, the Commissioner of New South Wales Police explained why they are treating the attack as terrorism. The things that influenced my decision to declare this a terrorist incident was the actions of the individual who attended, uh, we, we will allege, attended that church uh, with a knife, armed with a knife, and uh, stabbed the bishop and priest, and others were also injured. We believe there are elements that are satisfied in terms of religious uh, motivated extremism and of course the intimidation of the public through that person's acts. Well, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese called for unity in the wake of those attacks. This is a disturbing incident. There is no place for violence in our community. There is no place for violent extremism. We are a peace-loving nation. This is a time to unite, not divide as a community and as a country. So let's talk now to our Australia correspondent, Katie Watson, who's in Wakeley, the western Sydney suburb where the attack took place. Katie, good to have you with us. And so police describing and declaring that attack as a terrorist act. Um, what has been the reaction where you are? Well, you can see behind me there are forensic teams still working um, in the car park. It's a crime scene, um, so it's still very early on uh, in investigations. Um, but this was you know, an attack that took place just two days after um, the brutal stabbing in the shopping centre in Bondi Junction. And people here are really, I mean, you know, tensions are, are certainly high. Um, what we saw last night was... Of of course, the stabbing that was live streamed, and because of that, there were crowds that quickly descended here. Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people came um, outside and stood outside uh, this church. And at some point, they turned on police. Uh, there were police injured at one point. Paramedics and police were bar had to barricade themselves in the church um, and, and, and keep themselves inside. Um, police have also said um, that the attacker um, had tips of his fingers cut off. Off. They're unsure whether that was self-inflicted or it happened in the, the, in the, in the, in the, the riot situation. Certainly, um, you know, all of this is currently being investigated. So there's an awful lot really to, to, to digest and to try and get their heads around. Obviously, the attack, but also the confrontations that we saw afterwards. Yes, and we know the Prime Minister um, convening that emergency meeting, uh, also uh, urging people not to take the law into their own hands, referring to some of those, those protests and some of that unrest uh, that unfolded there. Um, but as you touch on there, these two attacks in short succession in Australia, I wonder what the general feeling is across Australia right now and whether there is a feeling of nervousness given what has happened and unfolded. Well, certainly, I mean, obviously the attacks aren't connected, but speaking to people here, there's a feeling that um, what we saw last night was a, a trigger, if you like, a, a trauma for many of the community who have uh, fled countries like Syria and Iraq um, to come to what they thought was a, a safe place. Uh, and I think that's something that they it was a, an attack on their religion, it was an attack in the church, um, and, and of course tensions there, you know, rose. So there's certainly that, that discussion is going on about how safe Australia is, and that is replicated across Australia. Uh, you know, the, co the conversation I've heard time and time again in these last few days is this sort of thing doesn't happen in Australia, but we've seen it happen, and we've seen it happen twice in the last, you know, in, in less than a week. Katie, for now, thank you. Katie Watson there, live in Sydney for us. Thank you.